come over the wires in the past uh, 24 hours or so that travelers to Thailand will no longer need to take a COVID-19 test before boarding the plane. So, for example, I went a couple weeks ago to Bangkok, as you recall, mm. and I had to take a COVID test before I leaving Singapore and then one arriving in Bangkok. So mm. two tests in the space of, you know, not too many hours. That is going to go away as of April the 1st. Both ways. No, you will need to have a negative test. Um, you will need to take a test when you arrive in Bangkok. Right. But you won't have to take one leaving Singapore. Oh, really? That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. And when you return to Singapore, do you then take one because uh, the so next day? Or? It, it will be the same at the moment. It's the same rules. When you come back into Singapore, you just have to have a, a unsupervised ART test Got within it. 24 hours. Unless you've had COVID in the past three months, in which case you don't have any test at all. Mm. Oof. Okay, everybody got that? All right. Uh, but it, indeed, you know, we are all interested in many destinations around the region, of course. KL is and, and Malaysia is a huge destination for Singaporeans. But Thailand is as well and always has been. Mm. Weekend shopping, getting away for a quick break, going to the beaches, um, always a favorite among Singaporeans and people who live here. Absolutely. So let's get back to it. Let's go now to Bangkok and get the latest on what's happening with tourism, with investment. And for that, we are going to talk to Supaji Sutampan, the group CEO of Dusit International. Those of you who know the Dusit hotel chain, Dusitani, uh, famous hotel chain. And Bill Barnett, who is the managing director of C9 Hotel Works. Supaji and Bill, good morning. Welcome to Singapore. Welcome to Money FM. Good morning to you. Hi, good morning. It's just a note to Neil. You've got to work on how to say Phuket. Actually, I'm not in Bangkok. I'm in Phuket, so it's like Phu Phuket. Phuket, right? Phuket. Not Phuket, Phuket. Okay, there we go. And I've got a barbecue Phuket. later on. And I've got a barbecue later on, so I'm looking forward to your tips on that as well, right? So, cool. <laughs> oh, the tips are okay, quite <laughs> simple, as you can tell, Bill. Tips are very simple. <laughs> Do not invite my father and keep him away from alcohol if you Very simple. <laughs> okay, well, well, it's great to have you both on. And uh, Super G, you and I actually met in Bangkok a couple of weeks ago, and, and you were talking a lot about what had been happening during covid in Thailand with, with tourism, with investment. Uh, to, for our audience, bring us up to date on your perspective of somebody who's running a major international hotel chain, not only in Thailand, but around the region. How, what has been going on in the past two years from your perspective and, and how are we emerging out of it now? Thanks, Glenn, and, and good morning, everyone. The, um, the situation has been very tough because as you know, Thailand has been, uh, depending on the, the international tourism quite a bit. Uh, if I want to put into the perspective, say, for example, the number of the international arrival to the country prior to the COVID in 2019 was 39.9 uh, million uh, international travelers, and it's bring quite a bit of revenues to the country. And uh, you probably can imagine from 39.9 million in 2019, when it comes to 2020, the number came down to 6.7 million. And the wow. 6.7 million is pretty much basically uh, on January and February. So from March onwards, pretty much nothing. So therefore, 39.9 mm. down to 6.7 million, it was 83 million, I'm sorry, 83% negative year on year. And uh, I let you guess, uh, for 2021, whether it's more or less than 6.7 million. I'm yeah. going to say less. Mm -hmm. And it's 94% yeah. less. So <laughs> 2021, it came down to 400,000. And so therefore, that is actually how you can imagine. So everyone is actually quite struggled, not only the hotel chain, but also the, the hospitalities as a whole. And Bill can also share with you because hotel is actually just one part of the supply chain, sure, right? Sure. Uh, so therefore, you know, everything's actually got impact. So therefore, everyone's trying to survive by uh, work on something, uh, non-room revenue, rely on domestic travelers because it's, it's impossible to uh, invite, you know, international travelers to come. And I'm glad that you mentioned about the new uh, regulations when you're going to come to the country because uh, they actually reduce quite a bit of the restriction. So therefore, you don't need to test the, um, the RT-PCR prior to boarding the mm. plane, but you have to test it upon arrival. 
So those would help. So yeah. pretty much two years in the past, we have to uh, depend on domestic travelers and also uh, work on something that relate to non-room revenue. Yeah. Bill, let's turn to you now and put Super G's astonishing figures into context for someone like you who's on the ground. You're the managing director of C9 Hotel Works. You work in hospitality. You work in tourism and real estate. So how do those figures translate to the ground? What have you seen in the last couple of years? I think nobody nobody understood how long this would last. We'd always say that, you know, I remember going back to 2020 and thinking, you know, when is it going to bounce? When are the Chinese coming back? You know, China's the number one inbound market on the mainland to Thailand as well. When is the volume market? We were all thinking maybe by September, maybe, you know. Mm, <laughs> yeah, by the holidays two, for sure, right? You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> over two years later, we're still talking about the same thing. I mean, Expanded tourism as part of GDP is nearly 20% of the Thai economy when you look at uh, the service economy, restaurants, bars, and these type of things. I think the biggest issue has been the stops and starts, stops and starts that, you know, it's really taken a toll on the uh, on the human capital and people working in the industry. I think it, in Thailand, people always acknowledge it was great service, a great brand. You can throw people at it. Now people are working in hospitality saying, maybe we don't want to be in this business anymore. And that to me is one of the biggest outcomes. For hotel owners, it's been a case of not mm. if they could make money, it's could they could they not lose as much. So when we look at the incentives and everything else, but going forward, you know, looking at the Phuket sandbox, one thing is, uh, you know, Thailand led the region in terms of reopening, but right now, test and go needs to be test and gone. Really, you know, we we really have an urgent need. If you're looking at Bali now, you're looking at the Philippines, you're looking at Cambodia, you know, still having this test and go process and having to undergo a PCR test on arrival has to go out to get any kind of real recovery. Bill, yeah. let me just jump in and follow up with a point you made because it was very similar to one made by the Scoot CEO on this show a couple of weeks ago and one that's often overlooked, which is a labor shortage. You know, it's one thing to have the tourism returning, which is fantastic, but he was mentioning, and you alluded to it there, that some people are maybe less willing to go back into the tourism yeah. industries because of the stop-start nature. Will I have a regular income going forward? What's it like in Thailand with that? I think one thing you have to acknowledge is that uh, COVID-19 was an accelerator of what was going to happen anyway. You know, when you go to Indonesia, you go to these booming Southeast Asian economies over time, and labor costs got higher and higher and higher. And I think, you know, all of a sudden we're getting Western-type practices, so that's also coming into play now. So Asia has to catch up in these developing countries with Western labor practices and more efficiencies and everything else. You can't have three or four employees per room anymore, and you have to encourage people. You know, today, people want to work in crypto. They want to be YouTube influencers. I know, Super G, <laughs> you've got some thoughts on it probably as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, you know, for this group, we do have also ho ho hospitality education as well, Neil. So I see this as an opportunity. So I'm working very closely with the Ministry of Education to help supporting the industry because you're right you know not many people want to come back to the service industry because of this uncertainty so what we've done is we create a, a short course and we create the course that also address those new normal like the hygiene the new standard procedures and things like that and help supporting ministry of education to work on the rank and file type of uh, level of the labor Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And of course, Thai hospitality is, you know, legendary. famous the world, le legendary the world over. And, and we see that in, here in Singapore, too, at some of our uh, restaurants and hotels where uh, there are Thai staff, uh, most notably the Dusit Laguna, which is one of your properties here in Singapore at Laguna Country Club that has a number of Thai nationals working. In a, and I've, I've stayed there and I've seen that attention to detail and that welcoming spirit, which, uh, you know, is is uh, really at the heart, I think, of when people go to Thailand, they think, of course, of, of shopping and beaches and good food and stuff, but they go there for the personal touch. Yeah. And to see that that there's something carrying on with that in terms of education, I think, is is very positive. Uh, we're in conversation uh, talking about Thailand and the return of tourism uh, from the 1st of April. You will no longer need to take a departure test 
uh, COVID test from Singapore, you will still need to take an arrival test uh, once you get to Thailand, but at least one of those tests is gone for now. So that is good news if you are wanting to get back into Thailand. Speaking with Supaji Sutampan, the group CEO of Ducit International, and Bill Barnett, the managing director at C9 Hotel Works. And uh, Supaji, as you as you look at people starting to come back, and, and when I was there the other week, uh, people had, were telling me, yes, we can start to see more people. The planes are half full or so out of Singapore going in. Um, I appreciate Singapore probably is not your largest market in terms of people, uh, but it is, I think, an indicator of people that are wanting to get back into Thailand. What What is Thailand offering right now um, that is interesting to the tourist who is coming back um, in these early days of, of the endemic, uh, uh, pandemic endemic? Well, the, the thing is that the trend, we need to also look into the trend of the industry because I, I believe that after COVID, there would be a lot more requirement that we need to think about. And uh, if we look back to 2019, I think it's going to be quite a while before we can climb back up to that level of quantity. Because uh, if I go back to the number, uh, the 39.9 million people or the 39.9 million international travelers, majority of those, like uh, more than 10 million, actually from China. And as you know, uh, Chinese actually has some sort of directions that they're not encouraged their people to go out. So therefore, yeah. to look for this sort of number, we're probably not going to address it. So therefore, the government, uh, TAT and the Ministry of Tourism, they work on how to change from the quantity to the quality. And if you look into this, the, the, the easiest way to do is to, to encourage people to have a longer stay and spend more money, right? So with that, then you need to also integrate to whatever is an interesting trend that's going to come in the future, and one of which I would say about the wellness, right? So because Thailand also known as a very good uh, medical uh, facility, so therefore we want to position ourselves as a medical hub, and if we include the medical facilities into the tourism, it could become uh, the wellness kind of tourism, and that would actually extend the stay and also increase the spending. So, you know, to, to change this. The other thing is also about, uh, for long stay, is about the senior living. I mm -hmm. think uh, the world is actually facing the change of demographic, right? All of us in this room perhaps accept meals in the baby boom kind of stage, right? <laughs> meals, uh, you perhaps, you know, <laughs> alpha. <laughs> He's so happy to hear you say that. You have no idea, Super G, how happy he is to not be included with the rest of us of a certain age. But carry on. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, all these senior livings also we require you to stay longer and also to spend more. So that is actually yeah. where the country is looking for and develop the package together with the, you know, commercial sector like the, the, the industry like myself to come up with that kind of offering. So therefore, we need to understand the trend. Longer stay, adding more on wellness, adding more on sustainability. I overheard you talking about the trash, the, the, the waste management and other things. We also, as a country, announced already uh, the support for the ESG, uh, the, um, the environmental the index, that we want to make sure that everyone's integrate that into the process of the way we work. So those are the few things that I think we need to tap on. And last but not the least, on workation. Hmm. I'm not sure whether you read the research from CNBC. They're saying that Bangkok is the, the most uh, wanted in terms of workation location. So hmm. I think we need to uh, tap on that because right now, because of the COVID, we can work from anywhere. Why not work from Thailand? So if we can create <laughs> those kind of, you know, the... Uh, invitations for people to come and work from us and and you will actually see quite a lot of you know new um, kind of wealth uh, these day uh, mm -hmm. I think you heard of nano entrepreneurial or uh, nano entrepreneurship those they can work from anywhere so we will welcome them to come and work from Thailand so a few things as I just mentioned long stay workations you know the senior living and all those uh, uh, kind of things around wellness would help supporting the country to climb back up in terms of revenue, but perhaps not the quantity in the short term. Yeah, fascinating. Bill, bringing it back to you, 
Uh, speaking as a much, much younger man, which has no relevance whatsoever, <laughs> but I just want to emphasize Super G's point. Um, but the key point that she made that was very interesting was adaptability. You're adapting to the changing market, making different offerings yeah. for different clientele. So focusing on that for a second, Bill, who are who is this clientele? I'm curious. I know it's early days, but which countries, which yeah. markets are yeah. you seeing coming yeah. into Thailand? Yeah. Well, still early days. And what we've seen is basically people come back, friends and family coming back in the country as well. We've also seen family reunions coming back in the country, people who are doing business, business travelers. You know, the sandbox wasn't about tourism recovery. It was about travel recovery. And these were the first people coming back. But we're starting to see those legacy markets coming where there's airlift. You know, you can't stay there if you can't get there. And our airlift through the Middle East to Europe is great. We've seen North American traffic with SQ through as well. I think something to kind of ramp on about you know, for Singaporeans who want to come back to Phuket right now, what's different? Or, or to Thailand, what's different? There's a lot less travelers here. And I think one of the amazing things we've seen is the regeneration of places like Maya, you know, Maya Bay in Pangna Bay. We've seen the islands become more pristine. We've seen Thais actually going outside and, and going to the going up country to the provinces, enjoying these type of experiences. I think people are getting out and they're going for more natural experiences. And we're seeing a lot more offerings as well, which doesn't well which wasn't the package tourism, mass tourism. Yep. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, Super G, uh, you at Ducet International just uh, announced in March a one and a half billion U.S. dollar project in the heart of Bangkok, uh, hotel, uh, Dusitani Hotel residences, uh, Ducet Central Park, and office space right across from Lumpini Park on Rama Four. It is um it is a very very a big statement that you are making on the future of of Bangkok and Thailand is is now the right time to be making that statement i mean given what's going on and and what was your thinking around putting this huge project together and and launching it and launching it now well i think there's actually no better time glenn because uh, during this time of the pandemics not much of the uh, traveling coming into the country as i just mentioned and also the uh, mobilities of people is not that much. So we use these opportunities to look into what would be our priority uh, besides, you know, get our people ready in terms of their skill and things like that, but also to prepare ourselves to the next chapters, to the next uh, era of Dusit. And this hotel, the Dusit Tani Bangkok, was around for, you know, more than 50 years it was an iconic it used to be the tallest building but you know over time things change but you know we still need to keep some sort of the heritage and legacy that we have built over you know more than seven decades uh, and bring it back and we couldn't actually stop the world from changing so we want to integrate the two so this is actually the times that we design and work on something that still carry our heritage but also at the same time address our future requirements and that's why we decided to invest uh, uh, in this project mm. and bill we've had a follow-up response from one of our listeners to your point about some of the measures in place need to go jane has said it's similar situation in singapore how can we expect tourists to come to singapore when we've got so many tests in place the trace together apps testing tracing and so on similar situation i'm sure in thailand bill i mean realistically yes health has to come first but for the benefit of tourism and hospitality what would you hope will happen moving forward to make thailand more welcoming and accommodating to visitors Test and go has to be test and gone. You have to remove that procedure. You have to it's a you have to declare it endemic. We're gonna have to learn to live with COVID no matter what has to happen. We have to continue with our lives. So that process has to stop. And it's gonna take a long time for tourism in the number of weeks back to recover. This is the beginning of a new cycle. This process has to be easier to travel, to have any kind of numbers. Half you know, you, you can't have planes half full and have commercial ventures. This doesn't work, so there has to be broader change faster. Yeah, uh, a fascinating discussion. I, agree. I, I know that a lot of folks here are going to be very interested to hear that it's going to get just a little bit easier to travel to, to Thailand uh, in this coming month on the 1st of, of April. I can imagine a lot of people are already online checking their Singapore Airlines right. VTL flights. <laughs> and Bill's point is a good one. It's yeah. like what I said before about Singapore. Now is the best time to go right. to support the industries, <laughs> and there's fewer people there. So you can have more space on the beach more place to go to the restaurants and the hotels and the massages. It's the best time to go, right, Super G? 
But Neil, course, bring your father. We have a barbecue. We have a barbecue. Too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. And we have a barbecue too. <laughs> uh, Super G, last word to you as as you're looking forward now. You're working on your project. You are you have expanded your hotel group across the region. Um, what is your hope for how soon we will get back to some sort of normal from your perspective as a as a hotelier? Well, for this year, I think we should be able to crawl back to about seventy five percent of the year prior to the COVID. That is actually wow. my hope. But that also depends on our friends, Russia and Ukraine, and how they're going to, you know, end the episode. So uh, if it's actually not dragging too long, then I think this year we should be able, I, I believe at least my group, should be back, you know, about 75% of the year prior to the COVID. I would say that um, maximum three years and uh, minimum two years that we would go back to the same level. But Probably not the quantity of the number of the travelers, but the, the revenue generation to the industry if we change and adapt to the model that I just shared with you. Mm, mm. So quality, not necessarily quantity, but within two to three years. Got mm -hmm. it. Thank you so much. Our thanks to Supaji Sitampan, the group CEO of Ducet International, Bill Barnett, the managing director at C9 Hotel Works, giving us their view of what's going on in Thailand and where we're headed next. Thanks for being with us today on okay. Money FM Saturday mornings. Thanks, Thank guys. you so much. And everyone take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.